Hi and welcome to Wild Ones Podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Gillian. And my name is Alicia. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wild Ones Podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Gillian. And my name is Alicia. This week we have been joined by an awesome guest, Wesley Grant, aka Big Granty. And he is big. He's big in all respects. That sounds really, really rude. Check him out on our YouTube channel. If you normally listen, you do need to have a look for the full effect. He literally towers above us, but he's also a professional bodybuilder, a former Royal Marine, um, a retained firefighter. Coast protection officer. Is yeah, that the word? former maritime security and not just defined by those labels he has been an amazing guest to talk to uh, we cover off mental health um, and loads of other aspects we were blown away he was an awesome guest so uh, get yourselves a brew get comfortable because this is a great episode enjoy so thanks for joining us today wes very nice to meet you do you like to be called wes or do you like to be called big granty big granty or granty um, most of my career I've been called by my surname, so, but if you call it loud enough, whatever you call it, I'll <laughs> so, Your name is Wesley Grant, so that's where Granty comes from. Yeah, surname. So from a young age, I was at a boarding school and um, everything roll call was done via surnames, went into the military, that was surnames, went into the fitness industry and it's just stuck ever since. They added the big... At some the point. Big was slightly, yeah, slightly <laughs> Why did they add bigs? I'm not too sure. I think it could have been my shoe size or the amount of food that I ate. But yeah, I feel normal, to be honest. Uh, so Wes um, has a few titles. He is WBFF Pro, Miami Pro, and Pure Athlete. Uh, pure yeah, Elite, elite. Pro. Um, so a fitness professional, but there's so much more to you than that. Yeah, um, the fitness professional just came by sheer chance to be honest um the one day i decided i want to get back into the gym and took it a little bit too seriously and uh, <laughs> went on and on to start winning a few accolades titles pro titles and my hobby just became my lifestyle yeah so, so take us right back to the beginning you obviously um aren't british by your accent you're from south africa i try and disguise the accent <laughs> as much as i can you're not doing um, a good job come on <laughs> team scones <laughs> um oh. yeah so originally from uh, South Africa, grew up, born and bred there. Uh, Whereabouts in South Africa? Uh, so I was born in a small little town called uh, Springs, lived in Benoni, which is in the Johannesburg sort of region, outskirts of Johannesburg. Um, landlocked place, full of life um, with you know your central, central business district there. And um, yeah, just grew up with the normality of the violence, the, you know, um, pollution, the, the rubbish, the politics, everything that goes on, as does every country, um, but sort of created that as my norm. So I hardened myself to any hardships that was obviously brought along with living mm. in South Africa at the times. Grew up through the apartheid years and yeah, everything since then, I suppose, has just become easier and easier. So. Do you think that really set you up for a life, um, the life that you've gone on to lead, because of having that um, childhood experience of, of growing up through the apartheid? Um, yeah, I do believe it's, it's really played a big part in my life. Um, the, the start of it was obviously all the hardships that I was um, brought to and, and exposed to, um, you know, deaths, shootings, stabbings, car accidents and everything. Um, the likes of seeing all of that from a young age uh, really hardened me up. Um, moving forward from that, I think creating calluses in your mind to sort of shut that out, it's what's driven me forward to join the British Royal Marines coming over into sunny, I'd say sunny, today's a sunny day, but um, the doom and gloom at Great Britain. <laughs> um, there are a few sunny days, um, don't get me wrong, it was the best move I could have ever made. Um, the apartheid years, it opened my eyes to it to a lot to be fair and I think um, a, a lot of it was unnecessary um, mm. being a kid growing up through that it was you know what, what was just laid out in front of me so I had to accept it and as I obviously evolved into a young adult um, moving countries and taking up you know my first proper job as a Royal Marine um, I was exposed to working hand in hand with people of colour and from the apartheid years where everything was segregated to now being there and 
and some of my best friends have got it. And everything evolved from that. Um, I've got great relationships with some of the guys that I can personally call, you know, some of my best friends in the world. So I think it did harden me up in the beginning, in the initial phase, which drove me forward to join such a hard and arduous sort of career path that I chose. And, um, and now everything's put behind me. So, yeah. So you joined the Royal Marines um, coming over from South Africa. Was that your intention? I don't think as a kid growing up, that was my immediate, you know, be all and end all, full stop. That is what I want to be. Um, it was brought to light by my father, who I asked if I could join the South African military, and he told me no. Mm. Uh, the reason for that, it was a down, down, downward, down, downhill slope of um, the discipline, the lack of professionalism, um, promotion, everything for, you know, the, the current up and coming joiners to the military. The conscription had ended, so I was no longer um, required to go and join the South African military. And it was by choice that people could join. Um, he then obviously found out that there was a, another South African friend um, and his son was on a trip, a golfing trip, which were um, kind of showing expression of interests to people that wanted to join from a Commonwealth um, country. So being South African as a Commonwealth uh, citizen there, I decided, well, I was quite interested after he had mentioned it to me. Met up with him, showed me a DVD, which was him you know, all dressed up in the Rambo outfits and <laughs> big guns and loud noises and bangs. And I was like, yes, this is it. You know, can't wait. Um, where do I sign? And he was like, oh, hold on, it's not that quick, not that easy. Um, a long process, back in and forward, uh, showing my interest, um, selling everything up in South Africa, packed up, took one back backpack on my bag and 100 quid in my pocket and left the country. One way to wow. go. How old were you when you did that? Good question. Um, <laughs> My memory sometimes gets better of me, but um, I think 23 or 24 years old. Okay. Um, I had obviously been experience, experiencing um, small pockets of the security industry with jobs that I had taken on in South Africa. And the latest one at the time of my decision was at a casino um, where I just had a promotion for stopping a huge fight that was in a nightclub within a casino. Um, unfortunately, one of the guys had been stabbed by a broken bottle managed to save him, sort the other guys out with what we do, um, which are pretty much throwing fists in any direction possible. And um, yeah, made very good friends with some medics along the way that managed to save the guy's life. So I thought from that moment onwards, I, I think I needed to be on this earth for a, a, a bigger reason. Mm. And, and that was clearly the Royal Marines and everything just gelled at that time into one sort of direction. And, and oh, yeah, the rest history, off I went and here I am. So during your service as a Royal Marine, what would you say your highlight was? Well, initially it was passing Royal Marine training. Um, I did three times the amount of time that a normal person would have taken to pass Royal Marine training just due to injuries. Um, I had a grade four rupture in my wrist and while I was obviously training legs and everything in the rehabilitation troop, I messed up my knee trying to save my wrist. So it was like six and a half a dozen. And, um, got caught up in there for a very long time. And the hardest part was the mental battle to overcome all of this yeah. and eventually pass out as a covenant, you know, green beret. So that said, there was a few bits and pieces that I had to overcome along the way. As I mentioned with my wrist, they gave me a um, alternative sort of method that I could do instead of just being you know, kicked out and left to the side saying, that's it, you'll never be a Royal Marine. Uh, my focus and determination was so prevalent that I decided to take a boxing strap and strap my wrist into place so it wouldn't pop out of place because the tendons weren't holding it in place anymore. Um, they allowed that and I had to pass physical testing to prove that I was capable of passing the next physical test within the actual training regimes. Um, I had to then pass them once or twice because they didn't believe it was going to hold. Wow. So it was test after test after test, which put me under a lot of mental strain. Um, so the initial highlight of my, yeah, being a Royal Marine was passing at Royal Marine training. Thereafter, I think going out on operational tours, knowing that I was out there trained to the absolute maximum doing what I was trained to do. and. Um, 
two of the best, yeah, the best memories from that. The rest is just filled with fun, laughter, and friendships and relationships with people that, um, yeah, I can call my brothers till the day I die. Yeah. I think um, we interviewed, in our second episode, we interviewed um, Pete Kelly, who's also a Royal Marine, who's now become an entrepreneur in Plymouth. Um, and he very much talked about the brotherhood and um, being part of something that, um, although he's left now and he went through a really poor stage in his mental health after leaving, um, he said he mentioned that he could st he feels like he could still call on the, the, those people that he served with and, and the togetherness and the bond that will never leave. And it very much sounds like you have that too. Yeah, definitely. Um, you create friendships through hard times, good times, bad times, um, times that you've got no one else to talk to you about, um, the things you see, the things you do out there. And it, it takes a massive toll on your, your body as well as your mind. Um, the worse your mind gets, the worse your body gets too. So a lot of injuries were picked up. Um, but I think the worst thing is not having anyone to talk to. And that friendship is so close-knit and so tight that, you know, as you say, once leaving the Royal Marines like I have, you could turn to them with a matter of a phone call and they'd be by your side, regardless yeah. of the time of day, what the situation is, and, and have your back. And and that's pretty much what the, the Brotherhood sort of entails. When did you leave the Royal Marines? So I left in 2013, okay. um, which is quite some time ago now. Yeah. Um, best thing I could have done um, was join the Royal Marines, and the second best thing I could have done was leave. Really? Um, I think the time that I had served, the things I had seen, the things I had done, it was, time it for was you. topping up that level of what your body can and what your mind can actually hold. Mm. And once that gets filled, it's, you know, there's only so much it can hold. And I know that we touched on this before we started um, recording, actually, um, and then we stopped. How was your mental health after leaving the Royal Marines? Yeah, initially it was it was okay. Um, you, you're still in the the hype and the buzz of just coming out of a military establishment, a lifestyle where everything is structured, and you're given that freedom. So the freedom is what's keeping you going, driving you. you I mean, every Royal Marine that I know is so motivated, self motivated, um, and that's instilled to them um, within the initial training. So initially it was fine. Um, I joined into the maritime sector, protecting the you know, cargo vessels from the Somalian pirates off the Horn of Africa. And that was with military like-minded people. So I felt that I was still within the clan, as to say, mm. playing with weapons and protecting people. And you always had brothers to lean on, although they may not have been the same guys you initially joined up with mm. or served with people from different military backgrounds too. As that progressed um, and jobs changed, I think the mental health deteriorated um, and you, you really have to to dig deep mm -hmm. to, to control everything. Um, like I've mentioned before, creating that hardness, that resilience to, to fight it, the, I suppose it's the, the hardest thing to do, but the best thing is your mind is the most powerful tool that you, you, you do have mm -hmm. and controlling that is where it all boils down to. So building up, as I said, that callous within your mind to accept it as the new norm, rather than focusing on all the flashbacks and situations that pop back up into your head from previous experiences. So you were in the maritime and, and um, CP world for a little while um, before you sort of started getting into um, fitness and um, bodybuilding. Yeah, so the maritime, uh, I'm not going to lie about it, is the most boring job ever. <laughs> it sounds great, it sounds all Rambo style, running around G.I. Jane, weapons, shooting at these pirates. However, there's long, long, long hours at sea, staring at nothing but one big blue blanket. And you've got a lot of time to think and train. So to pass the time after a watch, we'd start training. And in limited spaces, you use your initiative to do whatever exercises you possibly could. So training's always been within my blood, um, you know, through the Royal Marines before I was a little bit of a gym goer, you know, trying to get that buff look um, <laughs> as a teenager, you know, so you could go down the beach or, you know, rock up at a school. Yeah, which way is the beach? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because 
That just led into more training and more training. Um, the close protection side of things, looking after celebrities, um, some of them like that big figure of the six foot three guy with six foot three wide shoulders. How and tall are you? Just under six foot three, but don't tell too many people. <laughs> I like, I like, I like mentioning that yeah, the benchmark of six <laughs> yeah. foot three. I might just sit on something. <laughs> yeah. I'm five two, so <laughs> well, you make me look taller then. Yeah. Perfect. Are you are you allowed to talk about any CP stuff? Um, I can't mention names. Uh, however, Ooh. I've done loads <laughs> and loads and loads of celebrities. Um, I'm still active within the C CP world. So, some of the clients, um, everything from British royalty mm. um, to celebrities, British, American. And I've travelled all over the world. I've looked after big Russian families. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. No two days are the same as, as is in the Marines. And it's, it's just one of those jobs where you never know what's thrown at you. Mm. The lifestyles of them are so unpredictable that you just have to constantly evolve and adapt. So in doing that, I um, kept on top of my fitness and my aesthetic look to try and blend not blend in that's the, the wrong word I could <laughs> yeah, never blend in don't blend <laughs> so, yeah, to try, to try away. big auntie's coming through <laughs> yeah, it was kind of kind of sort of what they wanted at the at times mm. where other other um, you know celebrities and high net worth individuals they're looking for the person that blends in with the crowd that yeah. can carry a briefcase and look like a PA but yeah. you know they are absolute Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, don't mess with them type of people. So there's the two different sides of things. Um, I fitted into the big sort of overt monster that scares everyone away. And it's, it's pretty sought after in, in certain aspects. Yeah. So that's what led me to, to continue with the training. Um, you mentioned, yeah, so close protection and the maritime. Um, then there was also just some normal security work and as I said, my, my hobby sort of kicked in. It all kicked in when I was an operations manager of a security firm, running multiple tasks in multiple countries over multiple days, um, not sleeping at all. And eventually I just thought, well, there's, there's, there's some point that I'm going to have to stop all of this and actually look after myself. And I could show you a picture. I don't really want to, but I was out of shape, which I pretty much am now. I feel like I'm out of shape. <laughs> I have got nothing so to say. <laughs> For the listeners who aren't watching on YouTube, it is worth you just popping onto the YouTube. It's just to look at what he thinks is out of shape. Yeah. <laughs> and Julian and I were literally <laughs> stuffing bourbon biscuits right until we press record. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you, you really need to hit the gym. Yeah. You look, if someone could show me where it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that way. So yeah, oh, um, dear. I've lost track of what I was saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you you're so out of shape. Manager. You need to go to the gym. Oh, that was yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just want to do some press ups. Quickly, so I feel big. Um, yeah. So I was I was running multiple tasks, and I just neglected looking after myself for such a period of time that. I felt like a slob, useless, and that, again, took its toll on my mental state. Um, with that, I decided one day, I think it was January the 1st of 2017, that I wanted to start competing and just get off of my ass and actually hit yeah. the gym and get back to what I was, bring the old me back. So you've only been competing... Since January, well, well not even started. really, yeah, not, not even, even competing since then, yeah, yeah, not even three years then. So I hit it hard and fast, um, pretty much the way any bootneck mentality, you know, drives everyone. Well, no cuff too tough. That's it, no <laughs> cuff too tough. Oh, we're just too stupid to realise what we're doing is going to kill a normal person. So, um, yeah, hit it all guns blazing, a million miles an hour, and there was just no excuses. And that's the mental attitude that I, I adopted through it all. Um, as soon as you are making excuses is when you're going to start you know, falling back down that slippery slope of not doing anything. And we were talking about this um, in episode mm. one and also when we spoke to Jamie as well. There's something to be said for setting a goal and putting it out into the universe to, in order to be able to make it happen. So if you're just thinking it and thinking it to yourself, it's really difficult to find the motivation. So Talk for about example, it, put it out there. Yeah, with the podcast, we were like, right, okay, let's just do it. We picked a date. And we put it out into the universe, and we were like, right, we have to make it happen now. Look at the success yeah. that you ladies have done already. So. Oh, well, don't. <laughs> the flattery will get you nowhere, not to the gym anyway. Get you everywhere. 
<laughs> for those of you that are listening, flattery gets you everywhere. Yeah, it's totally. pretty good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you put that out into the universe, you spoke yeah. it into existence, you set yourself a goal, and that was it. You were at it hard. Yes, yeah. um, and you, you're rightly um, correct in saying that. If you put it out to the open, to the public, you share it on social media, you share it to your friends, you share it to strangers. Um, the more people you share it with, the more accountability you have yeah, to actually exactly fulfill that. those dreams yeah. and goals. And I put it out there saying, I will hit the gym, I will compete, and I will be the best and be world champion. And I just didn't stop. Um, so one day rolled into the next, which rolled into endless amounts of training, weeks, months. And um, before I knew it, I had a four-month transformation, which I can show you a picture of, that I couldn't believe myself once I had taken the picture and compared it. We can get our uh, producer to put pictures up. As you're saying this, yeah, probably. on the green screen. I'm just magic. Yeah, I just opened up <laughs> magic. and worked the can of worms there. Have a um, So yeah, everyone yeah, that's going to watch picks. that, don't look at the bad shape, look at the good shape. Um, but I couldn't believe what I had achieved, and um, that obviously gave me the confidence boost and set my mindset into overdrive, where I just thought, well, if I can achieve that in four months, mm. what more can I achieve? Yeah. What further? How much harder yeah. can I push myself? And all in the same time. Um, being a father first and foremost, being a husband, holding a job or two or three and um, not making excuses. So as soon as I started finding myself in the, the danger zone, I'd call it, of making excuses is when I'd give myself a kick up the ass and say, nope, that's it, you know, stop it. Be stronger than your weakest excuse and you'll always succeed. And when people throw it at you, you've only got so many hours in a day. I said, yeah, you've got 24 of them. Yeah. So use them. Um, you know, I'd sleep less or I would double up doing things. Uh, you just make it work. If I was up at two or three o'clock in the morning to get a gym session in to train before I'd go to work at six o'clock, I'd do it because that was what was needed. Same. <laughs> exactly. I'm always up at two. early mornings, they the terrible. <laughs> Them biscuits, yeah, we're calling them again. <laughs> I wanted to slap you there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's just because you left them on the table it's in front okay. of me and I'm dying. Do you like for biscuits? One. You're not allowed one. Yeah. Well, you've you're been very well supported, but it's supported as well, haven't you? And I think we, this is something else that we were talking about. It's really important to have that support network around you. So not only you've got people you can call on, but um, like you've just alluded to, you're a family man, you've got kids, you've got your wife, and, and they're all behind you 100%. Yeah, more than 100%, to be honest. I couldn't ask for a better support network. Um, my wife, she sacrificed a lot. Little Granty. Yeah, Little Granty. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so Hi, got, Little Granty. Little Granty. <laughs> She's uh, she's been phenomenal. She's put up with all of the cooking. Um, eight meals a day. I, once I trained her how to cook, yes, eight meals a day. Um, so she eventually started prepping those for me, which would cut down the workload that I had to do, so I could get more things done. Um, my my son Jake, um, as a teenager going into what teenager, um, you know, prior to his thirteen year old now as a teenager, yeah, he was so supportive, but. Most of all, it was boosting me up, seeing me inspire him. And he could be the one like, my dad's bigger than yours. So it's absolutely how awesome. How many kids have you got? Two kids, yeah. And how old are they? So Jake is 13 now. And Annabella, she is three and a bit, almost four. So she's so the littlest grantee. She's the littlest grantee. The little, <laughs> <Yeah>. little grantee. <laughs> Mini grantee. Which is quite So if you've got a tween grantee and a baby grantee. <laughs> which is also a tween. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> We've both got young kids as well. And I've also got a tween. Well, actually, no, he's 15. So he's kind of past that stage. But Just getting independent and yeah. self-sufficient. Self yeah. But it is cool um, when your kids can see you achieving or striving at least to try and achieve your goals. Because... Even if they're annoyed with you that you're not around as much as you could be, to be able to set that example for them yeah. to follow of working hard and that ethic of um, working hard to achieve what you want and not necessarily working hard for somebody else, but working hard for yourself. Yeah, definitely. I think you know, showing them that you have to follow what you want to do, mm -hmm. your dreams, your ambitions is... As long as they're legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think that's first and foremost the most important lesson that I could have been teaching them. Um, regardless of what I was doing, I could have been a street sweeper, but I would be the best street sweeper there is. And I've always said to, to my son growing up, um, always be the hardest working person in the room. 
and that's even if you're the only person in the room. Mm. And it, it's something I've heard from somewhere, I don't know where from originally and stole that, and I've, I've stuck by it. Just say um, it was your own. That's mine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big auntie said, <laughs> always be the hardest working point. person in the room. Exactly. So, um, even if you're the only person. Even if you're the only exactly. person in the room, that's yeah. it. So but I think we, we have that as well. Like we've, we've spoken about this a lot, Alicia and I, about how um, as, as mums and as as females as well, to obviously as a mum, um, to, 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 oh God, I can't get my words out. Hold on a second. <laughs> to be a good example um, to your children and to do what, to, to show them hard work and yeah. I mean for us because yeah, we travel that, yeah. don't we but quite mm. a lot both of us um with work and we're not always home um but I think for me I'm especially I've got a, a little girl who's two and a half years old oh, and gosh, I yeah. want her to see that actually when she's older she can she can work she can go out and work she doesn't have to be a housewife she doesn't have to be at yeah. mum she's you know all of these things she can go out and she can do what she wants to do and it's your choice what you do in life and, and, and how hard you work is, is all within you. Yeah. Um, you don't have to prove anything to anyone else. It's about yourself. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I think, yeah, that is the most important lesson to, to yeah. obviously pass on to, to a younger generation mm. and children especially. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a big expectation, like I was saying, on, on women especially to, once you have children, be at home and, and be mum and... It's not as easy and as it sounds, is no, it? No, <laughs> it's not. And and actually, I think that um, blowing our own trumpet here, we, we spend a lot of time with our children, but we we get on with our jobs as well, and we, we're doing the podcast, and we do a lot of other things, and I think it's showing our children, actually, you can... You live your life. Yeah, you can well live your well. life. You don't have yeah. to just focus on one thing, and it's really good good example. Yeah, and to lead a, a rich and fulfilled life, you're not going to be able to just do one thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned early on, um, you know, not spending the time with them. I think when I was doing the close protection, um, permanent, like I had permanent roles up, up in London and, well, worldwide, should I say, the amount of time that I was spending with my family wasn't enough. And that's why I've given that up as a full-time source of income mm. and only taking on ad hoc jobs at the moment. Yeah. And the reason for it was to spend more time with them, like you say, to teach them that, yeah, you can still yeah. work, but you need to have that family life balance. Yeah, you definitely um, need a balance. Yeah, you yeah. can't just be off and all the time. And going to the gym, I mean, now I've, I've got it nailed down pretty much that I could get to the gym at five, finish by 10 to seven, and be at home before any of the kids and wife wake mm. up. They don't even know that I've left sometimes, yeah. which is perfect. So um, it, it just fits into what you schedule your day to be. Um, exactly. and you can make it as busy as you absolute want, or you could fit it in to systematically fulfill all the needs and wants. And like you said, prove to everyone that you can go out there, work, yeah. and be a mom. And I, yeah, and I was thinking time. about this the other day, actually, because a lot of people will say, you know, about being present and, spe- and spending time with your family more and, um, you know, oh, you travel, you, you're away with work a lot. But actually, I make sure that the time that I'm with my children, I'm there with them and I'm, I'm not, and I'm yeah. present mentally, right. not just physically, because actually you can be with your children, you can be at home with your family, but if you're on your phone the whole time, or you're, or you're working away on your laptop yeah. or whatever, you're not really there, you might as well be gone anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually I think the time, if you spend quality time with the people that you love, then you can actually be away physically That's sometimes good. as well, which leads me on to speaking about social media. You've got loads of followers. Like yeah, there's loads. a few people that follow me. Just <laughs> have you had all of them <laughs> since you've been doing um, like competing? Or did you have lots of followers was, anyway? Like? No, no. So funnily enough, I, I was actually off of social media for quite some time. Um, the Royal Marines, you eventually get to a point where you're just like, I had it enough mm. with the world. I don't want anything to do with anyone else but my brothers. And got rid of the, the Facebook and the mm. likes of whatever it was back in those days. MySpace. Um, I don't think I ever went on MySpace to really? be honest. Yeah. Like, well, I had I a horrific MySpace account. It just, I'm just <laughs> cringing thinking about it now. Can we still bring up those pictures? Oh no, I deleted it. Oh, mine was so cringe that I found it and again? I deleted it because it was, it was just <laughs> I actually had to make so a request emo. to Google to get rid of the search for my MySpace account because mm. I was <laughs> just mortified. <laughs> You're like, please, I'll pay you whatever I it feel takes. sick just get thinking rid of about it now. <laughs> Imagine. But yeah, no, you, same, you are on Instagram though, aren't you? Yeah, you so Instagram is the main um, social media network and platform that I use at the moment. Mm. Um, since it obviously 
overtook, I'd say overtook Facebook, but because yeah. the ease of use, um, the quick, short, sharp, <clears throat> there it is, you post the mm. picture, you say what you want to say, and that's it, instead of you Well, aesthetically, you're through. modeling your body, aren't you? So what you need to be able to put those images out there. Yeah, so initially it was, you know, just a few pictures of the family and things like that, mm. and as I got into the, the whole mindset of this is what I'm going to do, um, I started posting my progress pictures, and eventually competitions and then trophies and then more and more and more and it just grew um as did i <laughs> so <laughs> tell us about your about. wins because that's really exciting because you, you've got as, some as big you said, titles you've got these massive titles and you literally have only been doing this for like two years yeah so <laughs> i started off with a show called miami pro um, it was a UK-based show, um, just the name Miami. Sometimes people get so That's confused cool. about that, yeah. but a really good show. And jump, jumped into that one, you know, head first, saying, I'm going all in. Um, the category I entered was a muscle model category. And my coach at the time had prepped me up to that stage where we were taking no prisoners. We were leaving no stone unturned, and he knew my military mindset and um, work ethics were going to be 10 times harder than anyone in the room. Mm -hmm. So I pushed myself, my body, and everything to new boundaries. And come show day, I was as nervous as hell. And um, jumped onto the stage and surprisingly won. Was it the first uh, one you ever did? No, so there was two before that. Um, I had a local coach, so right, moving backwards. I had a local coach in Plymouth that um, helped me out. Great guy, good friend of mine and my wife's. And um, it was pretty much a back and forth text messages. Um, this is what you need to eat, this is what you need to do. And it was a slight friend coaching, as mm -hmm. to say, um, whereas I don't think I was taking it serious enough. He took me to my first show, well, up to my first show. He wasn't physically there, but we was on the phone um, messaging around. And I took third place in my first show. And I was like, wow, great, that's, that's actually awesome. Yeah. I rocked up with the incorrect train, uh, not trainers, trunks, um, so I look, you know, odd on stage. Um, my, <laughs> it's always going to stand out, I mean. I thought that could actually help with the win, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Backwards, yeah. <laughs> no, they were completely the wrong trunks. Um, um, my tan, that was all dripping off of me because I hadn't prepped my body properly with exfoliating and all these tricks Those that you tans are learn. extreme as well, aren't they? They can turn so dark. dark. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they are quite fun because they last awesome for at least two or three weeks afterwards. I say it awesomely, but um, you end up scrubbing the hell out of your arms trying to get it off, and the wife <laughs> scrubbing the sheets. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every white sheet I lay on had like a body outprint of of where I was laying. So that's funny. Yeah, and sorry to all the hotels that I've slept in prior to competitions. <laughs> yeah. I'll say that now. I apologise. Wrecking so, um, hotel rooms yeah. all over the UK. Uh, eventually, what I did was I took a, a uh, not a sleeping bag. What do you call the duvet cover? And I climbed inside it, buttoned it up, so just my head was popping out. And That's I'd a great idea. In, there, in a yeah. dark duvet cover on top of it. <laughs> You're saying it like it we need great. to yeah. do yeah. this. Do, do you know, do know what? I never ever more. make tan, but I'm tempted to do that just so I can take my duvet cover to a hotel. That sounds great. <laughs> Slightly odd, but yeah, should you want well, to do that? We're pulling cool. things out of the bonkers bag every week. We did <laughs> promise. <laughs> So, yeah. But yeah, so um, went went across after taking the third place, and um, I got an invite to the British finals. Um, that was with a federation called PCA. Um, I went two months or three months down the line from that, um, competed in the British finals, and I took fourth overall against some big names, wow. uh, people that have been in the industry since two thousand and fourteen with huge sponsors. That, that was were your second competition. Yeah, second competition. And then third, you just came. First. And then, yeah, so from that, Incredible. I changed coaches. I said, well, if I could do this and come forth in Britain from a mate helping me out and, you know, training blase, yeah. um, I'm going to take this mm. dead, dead Are those other competitors a little bit like, oh, my God, who the hell is this guy? Or are they all really supportive? Well, the new boy on the scene shook a lot of heads, yeah. um, you know, and ruffled some feathers. Um, some of those guys that I was competing against are good friends of mine now. Yeah. And as I said, real reputable names within the industry and fitness icons. Um, so they were a little bit shocked to see this, you know, big six foot three <laughs> person <laughs> rock up on stage, um, and and you know, out of nowhere because there was no um, hint of me coming. There was no social media mm -hmm. posting or, or saying that I was going to enter these competitions. It was something that I just wanted to do, and 
from that, yeah, we fast forward again to the Miami Pro where I took first place and that was a universe um, title or championship. So it was the first in the universe on that one and I gained my pro status, my first pro card. Mm. And I thought, wow, this is great and got the little bite, you know, and, and um, sugar fix, we call it, like, uh, you know, your, your buzz about, mm. you know, just competing. And a few weeks later, um, there was a, another competition called the Pure Elite Federation. And if you had gained your pro status with Miami Pro, you were allowed to enter as a pro and competing against the pros with the Pure Elite guys. So I thought, well, why not? Let me go and just beat the pros. So I entered in as a pro and I took first place in the world, beating a current two That's times nice. world champion. I think it was two <laughs> times, two or three. Um, and that was my main focus. I every you day, had to every pinch yourself, session. really. There was a moment of, yeah, wake up realization slash reality that kicked in um, from backstage after receiving the trophy, smiling for the camera, yeah, putting on this big brave face in the meantime, you're just like, I'm petrified. I don't know what the hell I'm doing still. Running backstage and walking around to come and meet the family and friends and supporters and coach and everyone backstage. But between that, period of or well, that distance there was one exit door to the left of the entire arena and I jumped outside and I just looked up at the sky and I was like what the hell just happened <laughs> I can't believe it you know? no cuff too tough as yeah. they say you know so um a bit of teary eyes and emotions kicked in trying to dry that off to look the big tough hard guy before I got back to to see everyone and as I entered the room I almost got rugby tackled to the floor and people Aww. were jumping on me and hugging me and congratulating me and it still didn't quite kick in until you know driving home, and I was like, I've just, I've just actually made Smashed world it. champion. So it was quite interesting and exciting. From that, we fast forward slightly. Um, the following year, I had competed um, in the interim. There was a same federation, but the mid-year competition, which is the UK champs. So entered in as a pro because I had obviously gained my pro status from winning that title, and I took the muscle model pro uk championships and at the same show it took the overall so that means i was the best person in the entire show for the entire hashtag day. winning so, yeah, <laughs> winning goals um, you're the best all it was is just big ass trophies so Love eventually it. i was I where did you keep them yeah i was gonna say you've got a big cabinet at home You'd, like people but come around you your house and you're like truth. let me show you my trophies the honest truth was they used to be up on on display but now they're in a the box in a garage. Mm. And that's the reality that mm. I'd like to touch on later on. But it's just a trophy. Yeah. And unless someone walks into the house and sees that trophy, they don't know what I've done, what I've been through, um, or unless they check on social media. But each person has their own story and each person has their own hardships and parts of life that they've got to overcome. And with myself, I, before that competition, I just lost my sister. So that was my motivation to win. Um, it was, I think, six weeks before. So that was in 2018. And I just, yeah, folded. My, my body stopped working on me. Um, I could go to the gym. I could eat the eight meals a day, but I was constantly losing weight. I lost about 10 to 15 kilograms, um, which was, yeah, due to emotions and stress. Mm. Um, I used that as my driving force to obviously push me forward and the show was dedicated to her and yeah, I couldn't let her down. So I gave it my absolute all. Were you expecting for her to pass away or was it a shock? No, big shock to the system yeah. and um, totally unexpected and yeah, just totally ruined my life, the, yeah. the worst day of my life. So and Grief and stress can do incredible things to your mind, but then that, the knock-on effect to your body is just unreal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The, mind, the mind is the biggest, as I say, your biggest tool, the strongest muscle in your body. And to control that at that point was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, way superseded the Royal Marines training or training for a world championship title. But we overcome that. We, um, we moved forward. We progressed. And yeah... And you won your competition for I won her my as competition well. for her, which is great. We see so, that you were close to your sister because yeah. from how you speak about her. Yeah, she's she my younger sister and yeah, I'd do anything for her. Absolutely loved her. So And you're a competition winner and, and, and that for her is like I, I I can do this for myself, but not only for myself, it's in your memory, which is a really nice yeah. thing to be able to do. 
So that's the only trophy that stays out in my house at yeah. the moment, actually. So there's one on display. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, and as I said, the rest doesn't really matter. I'm still a normal person. Mm. Um, people look at me funnily in the streets, and it's only when people point that out to me that they're looking at me and like, oh, oh my God, have you seen the size of him? <laughs> but, um, I still think... Well, not at the moment, because you're trying it. Person, the yeah, out of shape. <laughs> out of shape. But Terrible. I just find myself... A, a normal person and I feel like I'm a normal size and I fit into normal clothes which the, the X's before the large don't say it but um, you know there's X then there's an X then there's another X so it's three or four XL's and eventually the clothes start getting tighter and I just thought my wife was shrinking them in the, in the washing but <laughs> it was me getting bigger so um, but yeah so we moved on from that and we won the second world championship um, defending my title and um, I thought well this is absolutely awesome I've Got to step it up another notch. So wow. we moved on to the WBFF, which is a federation owned by a world-renowned bodybuilder, Paul Delette. And he is by far one of the best bodybuilders I've ever seen in my life. Never won any accolades to the likes of Mr. Olympia and stuff, but competed with all of the best of the best. And he was known as the king. And he was a monster absolute machine, which in awe of every day. I mean, I, I look back in some of my gym folders and paper cuttings as you do when you're a kid, scrapbooks. And there was articles on him and training programs. And I looked back and I thought, gee, that was before I even thought about becoming yeah. a bodybuilder. I mentioned it to him at the last show and he was like, you are sad. Why are you taking pictures <laughs> of me when you can just talk to me? You know? yeah, bit um, weird. But yeah. So it's but I love you. <laughs> Secretly. <laughs> so um, yeah, went on to start with the WBFF uh, a few months after the retaining of my title with the pure elite. Um, Travelled out to the States. I won my pro card on my first show there. Wow. The second show was also in the States. The first one was in Atlantic City. The second one, three months later, was in LA. Um, I unfortunately only placed fourth in that show. And that gave me another kick up my ass, mm. saying, you must have been getting complacent. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, you have taken your foot off the gas and the snow cuff too tough is trying to beat you. Um, so I was like, right, I've got to step it up again. Um, put everything I absolutely had in my body, soul, mind, every last ounce of energy um, pushed towards the World Championships, which was in August in the Bahamas. So I went along to that and I currently sit second in the world. So this year... Amazing. <laughs> well, as my mum would say, you've been a busy boy. Well, yeah, busy, busy or naughty, yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, it's, yeah, again, people say, how do you fit it all in? How do you manage to do these things? Mm. And I said, and that's the least of it. Um, you know, if you knew I work 14 hours a day, travel for probably one hour, prep meals for another hour and eat for the rest. So that's, you know, <laughs> you're already you're you're a dad. About, you know, it's yeah, not 16 sort of, hours, yeah. two hours in the gym, uh, minimum a day. Um, you know, I'm tired spending, just listening <laughs> to you. Where's these biscuits? <laughs> So, and then spending time with the kids, playing exactly. with them, taking them for mm. a walk. Um, then every everyday things that life throws at you, you know, you, you've got your car that breaks down mm. or the boiler or this needs doing or fixing or you've got to meet that person or you, do a you've podcast. got somebody's, yeah, a podcast. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm honoured to be here. Thank you ever so much though. So, um, well, we, we need to, we've said this every week, we need to keep um, up to date with in the entire world we don't just want to stick to people from the military or stick to people um, to mums and if there is genres that we can cross in doing that then brilliant mm. and the fact that you're a family man that you've been in the marines that you are from south africa that you are uh, and now on this massive uh, completely different journey to where you started that crosses over so many things so you can be inspirational aspirational you can talk about your bravery and your resilience and you tick all of the wild ones boxes and from so many different areas and aspects of your life as well, which is just really cool. And that is one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Can I ask, cool. who inspires you? I think probably you're going to say maybe your sister. <laughs> she drives me. Drives you, She drives yeah. me, yeah. And who, who else I'd say growing up, you? Yeah, growing up as a kid, um, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is every bodybuilder's go-to answer. <laughs> yeah, I the read reason, that on the website. Yeah, the reason for that is bodybuilding... He's a legend. Uh, yeah, he's by far a legend. Mm. Um, the aesthetic sort of look of him was 
just, just perfect. It was perfection. Have you met um, him? I haven't. That is one of my lifelong dreams to meet him. <laughs> oh, he's busy um, being a politician now. I know. We said we weren't going to talk about politics, but why? Got no time for people like us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to stalk him, chase him down, hunt him. Yeah, and, yeah. get him on the podcast. That's it. You should, you should <laughs> Arnie, that. if you're listening, get on That's the podcast. It. You're next in the in the hot seat. <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> That was no, so bad. Don't edit that. But yeah, so he he obviously inspired, I think, every bodybuilder because he brought bodybuilding to life, to yeah. where it is today. And that was through what he had done as a person, bringing all aspects of life from people that aren't as capable, people that aren't as physically um, capable, yeah, the word as well, yeah. um, the, the mental side of things. And, and he's just brought it to show everyone that, mm. that, you know, things can be done. Um, again, while staying true to himself, true to his beliefs and true to the six rules of success that he follows. Um, yeah, that is really cool. And he's another person that speaks something into existence. He says, I'm going to do it. And he doesn't let anything mm. stop him. And that is it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you set your mind to plan A, plan B, plan C, which I've thought, no, scrap plan B and plan C. There's a plan A. And if plan A doesn't work, you find another way to get to plan A. Um, so there's never a plan B. You've got to make it work. What's your favourite Arnie film? Oh, geez, like, there's so many of them. I wouldn't be able to give you. <laughs> Twins is, is one of my oh, absolute favourites. Oh, God, what's yeah. the one where he Kindergarten pushes, cop? pushes his brother <laughs> off the train? Is that... <laughs> don't throw Mama off the train. Am I making that up? Yeah, I think you're putting me on the spot now. Our producer. Yeah. Da- yeah. <laughs> our producer, the film buff, would actually know. Uh, is it Twins? No, it's... Um, Sylvester Stallone, I think. No. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito's in Twins. Yeah, so it must be a scene from Twins that I'm remembering. The only reason I like Twins so much is that every time I stand next to a normal person, they're like, oh yeah, we like Twins, aren't we? And I was like, (laughs) I'm the Danny DeVito, you must be the (laughs) Arnie. Opposite way around. I like Terminator. Terminator. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. You can't. can't. Hercules is good, you get to see him with his top Mm, off and come on, you had to have loved that one. Yeah, but the, the storyline's just a bit naff, isn't it? You just get a Who cares about the storyline? You get to see Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the storyline, What do you think it? about um, The Rock? The Rock, phenomenal. Absolute, what a guy. Um, oh, I was like talking about the film. Too. No, I'm joking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now nah, you've got me on the spot. I've actually got his trainers on, the um, the, the Rock edition of the... Um, what do you call oh, Under Armour? Yeah. Oh, cool. oh yeah, so, yeah, because he does it. He's sponsored by Under Armour. Yeah. Yeah. So Under Armour, him. if you're listening, yeah. uh, other, other, um, <laughs> another sponsor on the available, group. But Under Armour, get in touch. <laughs> I absolutely love. He is him. brilliant. Um, yeah. His physique, his charisma, his style, his attitude. Um, you know, from ballers to wrestling to um, just all the films, the funny mm. side of him with Kevin well, Hart. Somebody said the other day, so yeah, I love watching him and Kevin Hart together. Yeah. They're they're so they just funny. bounce off of each yeah. other, which is but great. Someone said the other day that he's kind of like a, a, a modern day, even though Arnie's not that long ago, but like a modern day Arnie yeah. in the sense that he's like this big guy who can do all these action films, but he's also like funny and does like films with kids and yeah. like... Intelligence. Like, and well. so like intelligent. Tooth fairy. Yeah. I mean, this <laughs> massive guy as a tooth fairy. Yeah. <laughs> It is Love funny. it. Jumanji. Great. Yeah, Jumanji, all of it. Yeah. So he's, I think, yeah, he's nailed it on the head. You could get into big, film. Big, big guy. I'd love to get into film. So it's one of these things, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm working on, on the side. There's, again, those certain amount of hours during the day. And I'm squeezing in slight little mm. snippets of it to try and get into that. Um, you know, whether it be stills, adverts, films. Yeah. So. I think there is a niche for big guys, um, rather than costumes the whole time and makeup artists. They can do a certain amount. But yeah. Well, there is the, no British rock at the moment, so I think there's definitely the a niche. We've got some time to yeah, yeah to, to persuade the the, the locals. Hashtag so, the British rock. The British rock. That sounds sounds interesting. But am yeah. I British? Or, no. Does, does my accent? <laughs> no. Does my accent give yeah. Away? Oh, we've made an error. Oh dear. Um, We'll I, think I, am of British, I am British. I am British. Yeah, we'll okay. think. We'll, we're really good with hashtags. We'll think of something and we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 perfect. So, yeah. That's awesome. So, the kind of you've touched on, um, and we've we've got our memory board here, but you've touched on staying true to yourself. Um, and the thing that I guess brings to mind for me is that you're really, really, really busy all the time. Like there are so many hours of your day taken up with stuff. That, that is important to you, what keeps you positive? Well, that's and not exhausted. Good, that's what, how does question. exhaustion not set in? <laughs> Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think 
knowing that I've got set goals, set um, the dreams and certain things that I'd like to fulfill throughout the day um, or throughout my life, those things drive me to, mm. to constantly push um, and push harder and harder every single day, moving that one step closer to achieving what I need to achieve. So breaking it down, would you say that goal setting is really important? I'd say definitely. Um, set yourself goals. Make them unrealistic. Um, that mm. pushes you further. That pushes you beyond what you think you're physically capable and mentally capable of doing. Um, but like I said, you know, with, with all of that aside, I'm still trying to set up a clothing brand in relation to state of mind, um, which, which is, again, um, a mental health awareness and, and issue that is becoming big, big time prevalent within the UK, uh, not only from ex-military um, and armed forces personnel, but men's your day to day, health. yeah, men's mental health, women, yeah. depression is kicking in with a lot of people and it's becoming so over the counter um, that everyone is speaking about it, but not enough has been done about it, I think. So that's something that I'd like to make a positive impact on um, and where I can possibly drive home the fact that people need to talk, people do need help. So do we all, um, you know, everyone, as I said, has a, a point or part in their life where they've experienced something, seen something or done something that's affected them. Yeah. And that can't be spoken about enough. I myself haven't spoken to anyone about half of the things that I've seen, done and been through. But I think that's also what's driving me forward. That's what's motivating me to get out there and help other people too. Um, my sister is one of them. And, you know, with mental health issues that, you know, is how we lost her. So it's it, it really strikes home for me. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some of my best friends take their own lives, you know, in the military, well, after being in the military. It's it, it's not the easiest to comprehend, even more so than the things that we had been through and done ourselves. So, yeah, that's another thing added to the bucket list of things to do and you know, creating more work for myself throughout the day. But again, just keeping motivated, keeping pushing. Um, you know, as soon as you give up on yourself, I think you're going to start finding you're going to uh, step backwards, um, if that makes sense. You, you'd sort of go into that blunder of slowing everything down, not completing tasks, not being able to fulfill your day, not meeting deadlines or... And then actually that has a vicious circle because you then start um, feeling really deflated that you're not achieving those things. Correct. And then that negativity breeds more negativity exactly. and then you stop being an inspiration to those around you and then you feel like you've let other people down and so on and so on. You should have been a motivational talker. Yeah. Well, well uh, just on that <laughs> note, no, I, do, I do some public speaking on resilience Brilliant. because I've had two mental health breakdowns myself Um both as a serving police officer at the time, but not in relation to, one was in relation to bullying within the police and one was in relation to um, just a severe amount of stress in my life with my husband having his own mental health breakdown and being diagnosed with complex PTSD from the military, um, uh, from three pregnancy losses. Um, from And it, the catalyst for all of that the second time around for me was actually the death of my dog, which can seem so insignificant to some people, but that was literally the straw that mm. broke the camel's back the second time around. Been through a lot then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and also when you're doing a highly stressful job, and we've spoken about this before, when you're doing a highly stressful job um, where you see things that upset you, it's not necessarily those things that um, cause you a burden mentally, but you, you're constantly, um, you're like my dog, like your prey drive is really high and your awareness um, is just constantly switched on. So it's really difficult to switch off and, and living at that level of adrenaline constantly, constantly, mm. constantly yeah. really does take its toll on your mind and your body. And then the minute you stop eating properly because you can't be bothered to find the energy to cook the right food, that then has a knock-on effect for you mentally and you're in that vicious circle again. It's so just a downward spiral It really there. is. And it's so difficult to Don't motivate yourself. To pick find, yourself back up. Exactly. Back so, and that's another reason why we wanted to do this podcast because we even ourselves want to be able to continue to motivate each other motivate those around us we do a lot of voluntary work for um i'm not sure if you're aware of team team rubicon, rubicon yes yeah so we both um we met only last summer um at team rubicon um and that for us or was a we? massive no. yeah maybe we are my oh dad my was God. a bit of a slack really 
Yeah. Don't say that. I'm not <laughs> saying that. But your mum wasn't. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the kind of finding the, the motivation to do voluntary work. I, I so something else I speak about in my in my kind of my resilience public speaking is that volunteering can be really selfish because there's a huge element of I'm going to do this to make myself feel good. Yeah. But in doing that, you're giving back, and it's really interesting that you admit to that because a lot of people. Will, will say that no, volunteer I'm, I'm volunteering I'm, I'm doing, doing it for, for, right for everyone reason. else but you're doing you are there is a yeah, part of it where you're doing great. it for yourself because it does make you feel good it does make you feel like yeah. you're doing something and, and giving something back but so many people will just say oh no I do it for everyone else it's not for me well it's not what you're doing like the whatever it is that you're doing you know if you're cleaning out you know with Team Rubicon cleaning out houses that have been flooded you're not doing that for yourself you're obviously do that acts you're helping yeah, someone you're else but yeah. you're still there's something that's Gives you're you getting you're buzz. getting something back yourself out of it yeah. as well. Of course you are. I'm glad you actually said that because not a, not a lot of people see it that way. Everyone does see it. Just yeah, you're volunteering, you're mm. giving out, you know, your free time, your energy, mm. your efforts. But as you do mention, it is selfish um, because of all the the other people that also you you leave behind while doing these mm. things. Yeah. You're leaving your family, your kids, and everything to go and help someone else. So in a way, that's selfish. But I think the biggest part of it you're doing it to make yourself feel better yeah. and a lot of people don't realize that there's also two sides to the story well you know? we went to clean commonwealth war graves um recently mm. in plymouth and and i had to luckily the churchyard that we were cleaning was only about a mile from the house but we were literally taking it in shifts and jillian had to bring her youngest daughter with her um and i had to leave to my in the graveyard yeah, yeah, yeah in the graveyard, literally awesome. <laughs> and i'm bringing her up to be like a goth so it's fine <laughs> Just hang out in cemeteries all day. Just a pair of black Doc Martens, <laughs> dark eyeliner. You hit the nail on the head. You'll be perfect. Yeah. yeah, but that's a prime example again of, of the, our kids seeing us doing some good. We get a buzz out of our kids saying us do mm. good. Spent the day with some really awesome people. Great examples. And we were outside it. in the fresh air. I mean, it is completely a win-win situation. Yeah. And Definitely. you've recently just um, begun an, under, an undertaking of a voluntary journey. Are you allowed to talk about that? Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you went wide-eyed. So, yeah, <laughs> what wide is she going to say? Oh, God. Put me on the spot again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've just recently uh, completed my basic core skills of firefighting as a fireman. So my local community were crying out for people as a retained firefighter to man the um, uh, pump, we call it the pump, yeah, the big red thing, yeah. <laughs> the fire truck. Um, and yeah, they, they need people to keep that active during the day to, you know, save lives. Um, do they used to call it an appliance? Mm. Do they still call it They that? are still they called appliances, yeah. Appliance. <laughs> so, Trumpton. Trumpton? Yeah. What's Trumpton? So, <laughs> <laughs> Beg your pardon. We're not speaking about politics in Trumpton. Trump, you know. <laughs> no, it, uh, as a former police officer, you refer to the, the fire as either Trumpton or the water fairies. Trumpton? Yeah. I just called it the fire. What would you call it? Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Barney McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. They were from Trumpton. Come on, know, listeners, so again, if you remember Trumpton, please let me know. Am I the only person born in the early 1980s it's, I feel that remembers so sad Trumpton? that people can't see producer Pete's face because he's just shaking, <laughs> he's shaking his head. Oh, absolute uh, disbelief. Yeah. Do, Pete, do you remember Trumpton? No, I've not a clue. But I'm just reaching for my syrup. Oh, <laughs> that's to put on all the waffling that she's yeah, doing no again. <laughs> so, so you you become a retained firefighter slash Trumpton slash Water Fairy. Continue. Yeah, slash fire, <laughs> putting fires out. And, yeah. So, um, I've got a few more uh, courses. Um, well, they ad calls or continuation uh, development courses that I still have to co um, complete. Uh, one of them is obviously the road traffic collision accidents and yeah, sorting that out and breathing apparatus until I'm fully qualified. But it should be a couple more months and yeah, so you should see me obviously riding the uh, big red appliance around, <laughs> around the city. Yeah. In, here in Plymouth? Here in Plymouth, so, so locally Plumstock. Plum I do have to say, as a female... <laughs> I sense here. a calendar coming on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you. She's like, I know, she's thinking about a calendar. Like, I'm sure you're not sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Twins. So are you, a, Who's Danny DeVito? Who's Arnie? Come on. Oh, well, I'm We're Danny. Come on. Danny. I'm five foot two. <laughs> um, but I mean, as a, 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 a very tall, attractive, 
bodybuilder slash firefighter, you're going to have to do a calendar for charity. If it's for charity, I may consider it. Yeah, I added for charity. Yeah, yeah, I don't care was... if it's for charity. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> and at the minute, your wife's eyes are rolling. Like, oh, God, don't give him anything else to do. Bless her. To Just do it for, for charity. Yeah. But um. she, she kind of feels slightly bad about it. She said, well, you can't be put on a calendar and you've got another 11 guys that aren't bodybuilders that aren't <laughs> yeah, going to no, be no, 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 do your own. Right. So, my own calendar. Yeah. 12 months. 12 Why months. would you not? 12 months, months of big grunty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Our producer's also a photographer. Oh Why would you God. not? I don't know Let's if he wants to happen. see me. Let's make it happen. Let's just do it right now. Of course he wants to see you naked. <laughs> really he does. Who yeah. doesn't? Big love. Big love. <laughs> So, yeah, I thought you were going to throw, instead of the calendar, I, mean, I thought you were going to throw out there that we're going to have a lot of phone calls now with cats stuck up trees. Oh, and, yeah. And I've, I've set something on oh, fire. Oh, my house is on fire. Yeah, they've struck a match. And, <laughs> hey, please, can you come out and help Disclaimer, save Disclaimer, yeah. do not call Plymouth Fire just to try and get Wes out to rescue <laughs> yeah. your cats. Yeah. Hello, can you just come in there and fix a fire at my house? It'll just be me out there with a lighter. <laughs> I, do, yeah, I do come fully clothed. Yeah, exactly, so... It won't even be you, it'll be someone else that'll walk in and I'll be like... Damn, blow the candle out. Try again another day. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, it's actually a crime to do that. I'm just going to add that in there. You can't just keep ringing the emergency services. Don't (laughs) try this at home. Yeah, we do get stretched quite far and thin because of the amount of calls that we have, you know, life-threatening calls. So. That's why you've become a volunteer? Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, people oh, don't, don't fake call, call but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do not do that, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, so that, that's just something that I thought I could give back to the community. Um, I do also miss the, the thriving buzz of the Brotherhood, um, the military that I did. Uniform. Exactly. Uniform, yeah. No, do you know it what? is kind of cool wearing uniform. It oh is cool God. because you don't have to think about what you need to wear to work. Exactly. That's and the best my fashion bit. Calendar idea, terrible. different uniform every month. I could Royal, be a Royal Marine, Marine, Marine close one, protection. Close what do you got? Then yeah, like yeah. firefighter. Mm. And then just rotate. Just, all three. We're not going to get Gillian's <laughs> head out of the calendar idea now. <laughs> Great. I just like to be organised. I need a calendar on my wall. <laughs> Organisation. <laughs> if you put it down to that. What about yeah. an admin calendar? Would that suffice? An advent calendar. That so that means calendar. you'd have to do 25 shoot or 24 shoot. No, that shoot. can be just one. And then you pick parts of me <laughs> open and chocolate comes out. Yeah. Oh, God. No, God. That was wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second. For those that are listening, that sounded totally weird. <laughs> this is brilliant. Okay. Well, <laughs> All right. So rewind, cut, yeah, pause, whatever oh, we I need I can't to even do. speak now. Oh. Okay. No, I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> okay, I'm bringing, okay so. it, I'm bringing it back together. Bonkers, bring it back. Yeah, bringing back the bonkers. So, right? yeah, we are putting the bonkers back in its bag. We're tying <laughs> that bag up and we're just putting it to the side for a minute. So, <laughs> we've talked about what your inspiration is. Um, we've talked about the people behind you. What does the future hold for you, apart from a calendar? <laughs> so, yeah, strangely enough, I've only got one competition this year. Um, I think I ran myself really thin competing roughly every three to four months in the build-up to obviously all my accolades and titles that I've won. Um, it does take a strain and a toll on your body. So what I've done is I've just set myself a goal of one competition this year, which is World Championships in 2020. Pretty big one. It yeah, is. Where's it that is, based? That's going to be in the Bahamas again. Um, yeah, lovely destinations that they choose. And my wife, <laughs> you, just yeah, choose, you can compete choose the one with any the best day destination. you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, carry on competing, but I'm coming with. So, yeah, yeah, why not? Great. Um, but that's perfect. I mean, she's my biggest supporter anyway, so I, I have it no other way. Um, so I'm going to go and compete there. I am pushing to take on that first spot. I've got one more place to climb. You know, considering I'm second in the world, it's not good enough um, currently, even though I've already got a few titles. But it's for me that I'm doing that. Um, the other things uh, I've mentioned and I alluded to earlier on was... Um, SOM, State of Mind, a clothing company or brand, should I say, that um, is going to be bringing out the awareness of mental health. And that's obviously down to the closeness at heart of mental health and its issues surrounding it. Is that on the cards this year? It's on the way. So, yeah, okay. I'm not entirely sure. Um, mm. There's so much to juggle at the yeah. moment, but hopefully, yes. Awesome. Um, and then, yeah, just online coaching, which I do with the um, you know the plans and the diets for all the people. Um, just continue building my portfolio and help people. Um, so my biggest goal and aim is just to help people in whatever I do, whether it be the Royal Marines, the firefighting, the bodyguarding, the 
online personal training or even just mental health side of things. I just thrive off of helping people. So future goals is to help as many people as I possibly can. And if I know I can help at least one person change their life every year, that's one person more than I did the day before, the year before. So. Wes, they grant it, you're awesome. Thank I'll you. Try. Thank you so much. Thank you for being such an amazing guest. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, really we really appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Can we have a flex off for the cameras before? Yeah, because I know you have. ladies really oh, want to. Oh my god. Yeah, well, my, my, my right arm is stronger <laughs> than my left because I carry my three year old on my hip all the time. Your right arm's stronger than your left. Yeah, yeah same. Yeah. No, this is my right. I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Wes, aka Big Granty. Did you have a nice time today, Alicia? I had an amazing time talking to him and I also smell really nice because when I gave him a hug goodbye I like got the whiff of his cologne he's an all round good I egg I think that's just his own natural scent <laughs> we could go off on a whole other tangent here <laughs> we hope you enjoyed um, we did um, and tune in next week to find out who we've got for you next we need to thank our sponsors thank you so much sponsors firstly we have to thank uh, Locked On Media um, because we could not do this without you. Also, thank you to Plymouth Armed Forces Wards. <laughs> um, please keep up with them on social media. Find out the amazing things they're doing for Devon and for our armed forces. Um, we also need to thank Red Rock. Thank you, Red Rock. You've made us some amazing apparel right here. I think it's time we got some more yeah. stuff. Yeah, who cause... wants t-shirts and hats and stuff with wild ones on it? I know I would. I'm a sucker for a bit of apparel. Me too. And also, I need to wash this at some point. Yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> Hence me not having my hoodie on this week because it's got yeah. toothpaste on it. It stinks of dog hair. Mm. Yeah, all the rest. Good times. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Tune in next week for another amazing guest and actually probably some gin drinking next week as well. Yeah, and next week's one's going to be interesting because um, I think we've said this in our last one as well, but next week we're on the road. Yes, we and are. And we are without... Mr. Lockdown Media will miss you. He's not saying anything. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, until another week, thank you for listening. Thank you.